Good morning, I'm Reverend Michael Childs. Uh, welcome you to worship here at Lakewood United Methodist Church. Our organist is Martin Swoboski on our tractor organ and our pianist is Helen Emick today. I welcome you and greet you in the name of Christ and uh, hope you have a fantastic day. So enjoy our worship this morning. Thank you very much, Martin. Good morning, people. Good morning. So good to be here, good to worship God together and to be in his house of worship. Uh, terrific to be uh, in this season of the year. Things are changing and you can feel the nip in the air, can't you? Would you uh, join me in an opening prayer of invocation? Let's pray together. Oh God, our God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the many blessings that you give to us and provide from your generous hand. We do ask a blessing on our worship today that we may be able for this time to set aside the cares and worries of the world and to be in your presence, to be dedicated to serving you and praising your holy name. God, grant us a special blessing today as we worship you. In all of this we pray in the name of God, our Father, Christ, our Savior and Lord, and in the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I do greet you in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior, and welcome you uh, to worship here at Lakewood United Methodist Church. Um, there are bulletins, and I hope that you received one. Uh, Lee Sperry is very good about uh, minding the door and making sure everybody gets a bulletin. So do look through your bulletin. There are some notices that we want to highlight. Uh, first of all, the charge conference is coming up. It was pushed back to November 6th, uh, which is a change from the original date, and it is being held at Christ First United Methodist Church. The business of the church will take place uh, at that time, and if you are, um, 
if you are interested in going, everybody is welcome. You will have to wear a mask. You will have to uh, social distance. Um, and uh, only, of course, uh, when it comes time for voting, you have to be a member in order to vote. And so uh, that's important. Um, maybe you've gotten a phone call already from our nominating committee. They have been meeting, um, and they are prayerful about uh, selecting a person, and they hope to have a good fit with the particular committee uh, or board that they are asking you to serve on. Um, and there is a little bit of a joke, you know, that uh, once you're on a board, you, you serve for life. That's not true. Uh, they, they are asking you if you've served previously, if you'd like to continue, or if you want to come off. Um, and if you're new to it, uh, you know, there is a learning curve. We all understand that. So uh, don't feel anxious or pressured about if you, uh, if you feel like God's not leading you to serve. Um, so that's upcoming. Be mindful of uh, our Sunday school. We have Sunday school now, uh, attending from 11 to 11.45. Young adults and adults will meet together in the Library of Anderwerp rooms, and the children will be in the Ruby Harp room, and uh, all of you are invited and welcome to attend Sunday school. Um, it's an opportunity to learn and study uh, the Word of God and really get it in your heart and uh, be ready uh, as God leads you. Calendar for the week, Monday, uh, Bible study in the evening. Wednesday, there is our 10 a.m. prayer time, and everyone's invited at that time to pray wherever you are for our church, for our conference, for the needs of our community, for our nation as well. Uh, Thursday, Bible study in the morning at 10.30. We're continuing to work through the Ray Vonderlaan book. Uh, this afternoon, there will be a memorial service here at 3 o'clock for Cynthia, Cynthia Churchill Kohler Smith. I left uh, that out. She was in the uh, Post Journal as Cynthia Smith. And uh, visitation at 2 o'clock. Um, and then the service at 3 You'll see we do have some birthdays and anniversaries, and we are uh, celebrating with you. We welcome, uh, you know, it's good to celebrate these events in our life, uh, in the life of the individuals of our church family. So, uh, and I think uh, Harriet, Harriet, you're not listed there. When's your anniversary? The third would be next Sunday. Coming up. Okay. You're going to be, you'll be listed next week, but we'll be thinking about that. Um, and, and today is actually uh, Jill Piazza's birthday. So if you see her or if you are, maybe you're a friend with her on Facebook, send her a happy birthday message. And Bill and Netta celebrated their anniversary yesterday. Um, and a couple days ago, Jim and Ann Capolino. Any other notices? Yes. Well, Our my name. son Roger should have his name up there for a birthday. He's going to celebrate tomorrow. And he's been a long time member. And um, the other thing I wanted to point out is for Sunday school, we have everybody covered. If you have young kids that are preschool or in school younger, they have a teacher. If you have a toddler, we have somebody to watch the toddlers. So there's Thank you, Arlene. That's a good reminder. And uh, some of you say, well, my kids are growing up and they're gone. And, but if you have grandkids or maybe you have a friend with grandkids, invite them. Invite them to come. That's important. Um, Love, Inc. is a uh, interdenominational uh, nonprofit within Jamestown. And they are doing their Love Your Neighbor campaign. 
they will bring a sign and put it in your yard or a friend's yard that says you are loved. And just $15 for a sign to be there for a week, and then they'll remove it to another place. Uh, and they do have a, a bonus, two for 25 you can get two signs for 25 So this is an annual fundraiser they do, and it's a good way to help remind somebody that they're being loved. Um, and, and it can be kind of fun because you don't know who put it there. You know, unless you let them know, they won't know. Uh, but they know that somebody's thinking about them, somebody cares about them. Anything else? Anything else to lift up? Let us... Uh, let us move into our call to worship and together in unison let us join our voices if the lord had not been on our side we would have been swallowed up by our enemies if the lord had not been on our side we would have been engulfed like a torrent our help is from the lord who made heaven and earth praise the lord our beginning hymn today is out of the brown hymn book number 224 bring them in. It's a really peppy tune. If you don't know it, I invite you to learn it. And if you do know it, sing vigorously. <coughs> Thank you. Please be seated. Join me, if you would, in our unison prayer this morning. O oh God, we are your people, the sheep of your pasture. We are often surrounded by the enemy. We are overwhelmed by foes, like wolves circling our pen. We are caught by the raging of their fury, yet you are Lord over all. You are creator God, author of heaven and earth. We praise your holy name and thank you for rescuing us from all our foes. In God we pray, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. On the back page of your bulletin, there are prayer concerns listed uh, for our country, for the United Methodist Church in general, for our conference leadership, Bishop Webb and our DS, Suzanne Block. For myself and my wife and our family, for our church, 
and church family, and also the churches of the week, Fentonville and Frewsburg, Wheeler Hill, United Methodist Churches, and Pastor Deborah Westcott, husband Robert, and family. And there are other prayer concerns listed. Be mindful of those as well. And do keep these people in your hearts and in your prayers uh, for this coming week. So let us turn our hearts toward God and offer a time of prayer. O oh Lord, our God, we thank you for this day. We lift up our nation. We know, Lord, that uh, there are troubles all over the world. And there are troubles in our own nation as well. There are divisions where there should be no division. There are infighting where there should be no in fighting. And there are roadblocks to progress, roadblocks that need to be pushed aside. God, we pray and ask for your mighty hand to attend to our troubled nation, to our troubled world, where there are battles and wars being fought. There is illness there is a pandemic still going on, and still people are being treated. And Lord, we pray for your hand of mercy. Pray for your wisdom to guide the leaders of our nations. Pray, God, that you would guide our direction and our purpose. We lift up our Bishop Webb. Pray that you would give him insight give him blessing. Pray for our DS as she works hard for our district. Pray, Lord, for our own church and the people that are here gathered and those who are not here but are with us in heart and in spirit. I lift up our sister churches, Fentonville and the Wheeler Hill churches and Pastor Deborah Westcott and her family. Pray, Lord, you would give her wisdom and discernment. Give that congregation, those congregations, um, inspiration. And God, for others listed in our bulletin, we do pray for your comfort, for your healing, for your mercy to be there with them. Pray for the family of Cynthia Churchill Kohler Smith. And that you would bring comfort to them, bring peace and assurance that Cindy is with you now. For others who are suffering, Lord, we pray for your hand of mercy. Pray for your goodness to overflow upon them. And I pray that as we go about our day and our week to come, that, that you would help us as we interact to, to show the love of Christ to everybody that we meet. God, touch our hearts and our lives. Uh, renew the right spirit within us, a spirit of peace and kindness and compassion. And now, God, we, we lift up our voices as we think of those that are not listed, but they are on our hearts right now. Lord, I lift up my friend Autumn and pray for her ongoing health and healing. And now, Lord, we 
lift up our voices and say together that prayer as you taught your own disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn today is a hymn of encouragement, number 128 in the red, uh, He Leadeth Me. of that page so if you want to bookmark it you can do so and that would be fine I invite any young people to come forward if they would like to join me up front for a message
says, you know what, my son, still, my son just turned 35. He has a big, a big box full of Legos that he's collected since he was a little guy. And he still sometimes will get out his Legos and play with them. They're little blocks that are very colorful and they interlock so they can fit together and you can build almost anything. Isn't that cool? If you like to build stuff, they're a lot of fun because they're small bricks and they fit together. But you know what I found out? When my son would play with them, sometimes he would just leave them on the floor. And then I might come through in their feet and step on them. And you know what? It's not fun. They hurt. They hurt when you step on them. They're really sharp. And they're, they're little plastic bits. As soon as you step on it, you know. And it makes you jump. It made me jump. And it, it made me howl sometimes. I said, whoa! I stepped on a Lego. Well, we need to remember you know, sometimes uh, a Lego, small brick, very small, but it can make me stumble. I step on it and I'm like, whoa! Uh, sometimes we as Christians do things to make somebody else stumble. And that's not good. You don't want to make somebody stumble, do you? And we want to try to keep everybody growing in Christ and going forward. Uh, so we have to be mindful. We've got to remember to love one another and to show our love and try not to cause anybody to stumble, right? All right, let's have a prayer. God, we thank you for these young people and pray, Lord, that you would help them in their daily walk to love you and to love one another. We ask a blessing upon them. Help us not to stumble as we go about our day, but to just love you and show forth the love of Christ to, to everyone we meet. And we pray it in Christ's name. Our scripture lesson today comes out of Mark's gospel, Mark chapter 9. In the blue Bibles in the pew, it is 770. And I know uh, Pauline listed it for the other Bible as well, uh, number 43 in the New Testament in the RSV. Mark 9, 38 through 50. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone using your name to cast out demons, but we told him to stop because he wasn't in our group. Don't stop him, Jesus said. No one who performs a miracle in my name will soon be able to speak evil of me. Anyone who is not against us is for us. If anyone gives you even a cup of water because you belong to the Messiah, I tell you the truth, that person will surely be rewarded. But if you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone hung around your neck. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better to enter eternal life with only one hand than to go into the unquenchable fires of hell with two hands. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better to enter eternal life with only one foot than to be thrown into hell with two feet. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. It's better to enter the kingdom of God with only one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the maggots never die and the fire never goes out. For everyone who will be tested with fire, salt is good for seasoning, but if it loses its flavor, how do you make it salty again? You must have the qualities of salt among yourselves and live in peace with each other. This is the word of God for the people of God.
some levity for us this morning from comedian Chuck Sklar. I went home to visit my mom the other day. She made my favorite meal, pancakes. All you can eat, $10. <laughs> and from Elizabeth, probably the worst thing you can hear when you're wearing a bikini is, good for you. And Nathan Dunaway shares from his experience, once when my mother asked me if she had any annoying habits, I observed that she typically follows up statements with a question asking for validation. She thought a moment and then admitted, I do do that, don't I? <laughs> and finally, a quotable quote from Julie Kidd. I don't want to say we eat out a lot, but I've noticed that lately when I call my kids for dinner, they run to the car. <laughs> Would you pray with me this morning? Oh Lord God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh God, you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. John Wesley had a simple tenet, three simple rules. First, do no harm. Second, do good. And third, stay in love with God. We call them Wesley's three rules now, absolutely simple, but very difficult to follow completely. And the di difficulty comes because we are human. We are human. We are prone to have wrong motives, even when we intend to do no harm. Sometimes we do cause harm, even unintentionally or sometimes by not doing something. Can you relate to that? In August 1988, 38 children from 17 different countries took part in the first Lego World Cup building contest held in Villa, Denmark. That same year, Lego Canada was established. The Lego line grew again in 1989 with the release of the Lego Pirates theme, which features a variety of pirate ships and deserted islands and treasure. The Lego Group's Educational Products Department was renamed Lego Docta. It comes from the Greek word didactic, which means the study of the learning process. MIT's Dr. Seymour Papert from the Laboratory of Computer Learning was named Lego Professor of Learning Research because uh, his ongoing work in linking the Lego program with uh, the Lego products. Legos began in 1932 in a Danish carpentry workshop. Ole, Ole Kirk Christensen started as owner of a furniture manufacturer in Billund, Denmark. And then during the Great Depression, he had his workers begin to build miniature versions of some of their products, ladders and chairs, ironing boards. And then they began to build toys, piggy banks and pull toys and cars and trucks and houses, all made from wood. 1934, Christensen held a contest among his staff to name his company, offering a bottle of homemade wine as the prize. Christensen was considering two names himself, Legio, with the implication of legion, a legion of toys, and then Lego, a self-made contraction from the Danish phrase, Legot, meaning play well. Later, the Lego group discovered that Lego could be loosely interpreted as I put together or I assemble in Latin. So Christensen selected Lego and the company began using it on their products. Did only Kirk Christensen intend to do harm, to do no harm and to do good? Yes, I think he did. Did Ole Kirk Christensen ever step on some Legos while getting up to go to the bathroom at night? I don't know. But there are depths of pain and stumbling that you may not know until this happens to you. These sharp little plastic blocks are murders, Stefan. 
And when I think of stumbling blocks, this came to mind for me. Legos, a wonderful toy that can lend great creativity. And I know my own children spent hours and hours building with Lego bricks. But oh my, oh do they hurt to walk on. Mark did not have Lego bricks to worry about. He records the account in today's gospel about Jesus' disciples trying to stop a man from using the name of Jesus in casting out evil spirits and healing people. This might be akin to us closing down another group who were not United Methodists, but they're meeting in a space in an old barn to preach and teach about Christ. Jesus tells John quickly, and it's a word for us as well, don't stop him. Don't stop him. No one who performs a miracle in my name will soon be able to speak evil of me, says Christ. And then he says this, and I think this is important. Anyone who is not against us is for us. Anyone who is not opposing us is for us. How often have you thought about this in regard to other ministries? Maybe even nonprofits. Have you ever felt slighted or angry at other groups that maybe they do a lot of good, but they're not United Methodist? Or they do a lot of good, but they're not quite like we are. Can the Baptists and the Pres Presbyterians also do no harm and do good and love God deeply? What about the Lutherans and the Quakers and the Mennonite and the Amish? These people are different than we are, and some have very different tenets they hold to. But if they worship Jesus Christ, isn't that a good thing? Can the work of groups overseas, can they be doing good work? And we all be on the same team. We may look different, have different customs, different habits. But if we're talking about Jesus, we are in this together. And we should celebrate one another, not be in competition. And Jesus says, if anyone gives even a cup of water because you belong to the Messiah, I tell you the truth, that person will be rewarded. They surely will. We're told not to stop someone from doing good in the name of Jesus. And that a person will be rewarded for an act of kindness towards someone, anyone who belongs to Christ, who is a Christ follower. So that's the positive. Do no harm. Do good. Stay in love with God. But there will be punishment for those who cause stumbling or cause a little one to sin. Does that mean small children? Certainly seems that way, doesn't it? Certainly that's how we often interpret that verse. Don't cause a child to stumble. And that's important. It really is. Then we discover that for the writer, this term might have meant a new disciple, a little one, a new one in the faith. Little ones, not in the sense of being young or small, but being fresh to the faith. If you scatter Lego bricks around and a new believer stumbles on them, there's going to be a penalty, a harsh penalty. William Barclay, the Scottish theologian, tells us there are two different types of millstones. There was a very small millstone that was used in the household uh, to grind up wheat for flour. And this small one was not what they were talking about. He was talking about a larger one found in a mill, turned by a donkey, attached usually to a, to a long gourd or a long pole that stuck out from it. And the donkey would walk this circuit. The stone being large and heavy. And imagine having that heavy millstone tied around your neck and being thrown into the sea as punishment. No escaping the image of punishment here. But Jesus is saying, and he pushes the image even further, to emphasize to us the evil of sinning. And he's using graphic images, graphic language. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. 
Better to enter eternal life with only one hand than to go into the unquenchable fires of hell with two hands, where the maggots never die and the fire never goes out. The same can be said for your foot or for your eye, used in comparison. Better to be maimed and to go into eternal life than to have all your abilities, all your faculties, but be cast into hell. He's telling us, he's not mincing words, that we are better to get rid of that offensive body part than to go into hell with it. In hell, there is eternal fire burning. From texts in Revelation 20, we get the idea of a fiery lake of burning sulfur, unending pain. And I think of that story Jesus told of Dives and Lazarus after their deaths. Dives is in torment, wanting just a cool drop of water to help ease the heat that he's feeling, to help slake the thirst. The fires of hell's torments do not end. While listening to another preacher one day, I heard him say, hell was not created for us. Hell was not created for us. It was meant for the devil. The devil and all his cohorts. However, we may end up there as punishment. Wesley taught, do no harm, do good, stay in love with God. Now, we're prone to leaving Legos about and, and somehow causing people to stumble. Sin is crouching at our door, Jesus said. The devil is going about like a roaring lion, just looking for someone to land on. Just looking for a way to make you fall. Just looking to keep you out of heaven. All of this is to say it is not easy to keep the greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. There was a young boy called Antonio. He was 11 years old, but he was soon going to be turning 12, and his parents had asked him, what do you really want for your birthday? What do you want? And he thought of his old wrecked bike, and he thought, man, I would love a brand new bicycle. You know, one of those with the big fat tires and shiny chrome and shiny uh, words written on it. And, oh, I would love a new bicycle. But he knew his parents could not afford it. And so he said to them, you know what I want? I want a new nightstand, something with drawers on it so that I could lock the drawers, keep my siblings out of my stuff. He'd been working on a science project and his little brother got into it and messed it up and it was ruined. He said, I really want a, a nightstand that I could put my things into, keep my siblings out of it. So they went to a secondhand store and they found a nightstand and it was perfect for him. And he brought it home and he started to take the drawers out. He was going to paint it his own colors, make it his own. And somehow as he was taking the drawers out, something fell. And he looked and, and there was a bag, a, a plastic Ziploc bag. And, and in it, there were some documents and there was some money. In fact, there was a lot of money. He was very excited when he saw this and he he opened the bag and he looked at the document briefly and put it aside and he started counting the money. And when he got up to $1,000, he was overwhelmed. And he was so excited, I've got all this money, I can buy my own bicycle. But you know, even as he thought about that, he heard his mom knocking at the door. Antonio, do you need any help? How's the painting going? What's going on? And he said, I'm okay, Mom. Don't worry. I'm okay. I'm doing fine. And he kept thinking about using this money to go out and buy a new bicycle. But as he thought about it, 
his conscience started to work on him. And he realized this money was not his money. And he looked at the paper that had come with it, and it was some kind of a will. It was some kind of legal testament. Finally, he took the money in the bag and the document, took it out to his mother, and he said, Look, I found this in my new nightstand. Well, Antonio's parents said, We've got to take this back. We've got to find who this belongs to. Turned out that the will was written by a woman who had just died. They called the secondhand shop, and yes, they had a record, and they went back to that secondhand shop, and they met there with the family that had donated it, a mother, a father, and three children. And as they came into that building, and they all looked at each other, and Antonio handed it to them. And the man said, you know, my mom just died. And I just lost my job. I didn't know how I was going to pay the rent. But now, thank you for returning this to me so that I can be helped. You've done a good deed. Thank you. Hard decision for, for an 11-year-old, soon to be 12. But he made the hard decision that he had to make. His conscience was speaking to him. And so Mark tells us, Jesus tells us, be salt. Be doing good daily, just like we season food with salt upon it. In the same way, sprinkle your day with good deeds and good words and positive influences. Stop leaving Legos out. Stop leaving Legos for people to stumble on. Share the love of Christ in the world. His promise to you is the greatest reward ever to be with him in paradise, to spend eternity in the glory of heaven. So don't leave the Legos where people will stumble on them, and especially the little ones, the new in the faith, the children too. Let's guide them towards heaven. Would you pray with me? Oh Lord, our God, we thank you for giving us strength for today. Help us, God, to follow Jesus each day and to do good in his name. A cup of water or helping our neighbor or sharing our faith. Let us be salt in the world. Salt that spreads the joy and glory of your love to others. In God we ask it, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, as God has blessed you be a blessing to others and our offering still we're not passing the plates there are plates in the back uh, please remember though to put your offering in to uh, encourage us all and to share the love of Christ in the world and also here so I'm going to offer a brief prayer for our offerings and then uh, we'll sing our doxology and that will lead us into our closing hymn, number 127. Let's pray together. Oh God, we thank you for the blessings you give, some seen and some unseen, many unseen blessings. God, so many of us, are, our cups are full, full to overflowing with the gracious goodness of your love, your forgiveness, your mercy, your tenderness. Oh God, continue to bless us, each one, and bless this congregation, bless this church, and help us, God, as we continue to spread the love of Christ here and around the world. Lord, take these tithes and gifts and offerings and multiply them for your work and bless them. In the powerful name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us join together in our doxology, and then we will sing 127, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah.
benediction. Breathe upon us again, Lord, and let your spirit bring new life. We ask it in God's name, Father, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today and have a wonderful, blessed day in the name of Christ our Lord.